Hey, hello, we are back home for a few days before we head out again to Chicago to see Micah's parents. I thought I'd do a vlog showing my trip to LA and my fabric haul because I haven't had much time to work on Fro with all the traveling. I tried to bring it along with me and I did get a little bit done on the beading, but this beading is taking a really long time. So I'm bringing it to Chicago too and we'll just work on it then. <laughs> my baby bet pillow with me because baby that is hiding out under Frau's farthingale and doesn't want to hang out with me. So we left for LA a week ago, last Thursday. Spent pretty much the entire day on planes and in airports, so that's not a very exciting day. But the next day on Friday, we got to hang out and have some fun. We met up with our friend Denise in Little Tokyo and started our day with breakfast from Donatsu. I don't particularly like donuts, so I let Micah pick the flavor and he loves everything Oreo, so he picked the Oreo donut. But they have so many different flavors and variety. There's like a matcha rose one that I've had before which is super good and they've got a dragon fruit one which is beautiful I just wasn't feeling a sweet breakfast that day so after we went to get donuts we immediately went to Daikokuya for ramen I love their standard chashu ramen but my friend Denise is a vegan she really loves their spicy sesame ramen so if you're vegan that's a really good option after we were done eating we were super full so we thought we should probably walk off of the food we ate we wandered around little Tokyo for a while in the arts district and it was a really nice slow day <laughs> start off a really really busy trip event that we're really in LA for my uncle's retirement party this was the original trip that we had planned before my grandfather passed away found out after we had booked these tickets that we were gonna be going out to LA again for the funeral so it was kind of stressful doing these long flights kind of back to back but it was really nice to see my family in a context that was a little bit happier. <laughs> we spent most of the day just getting ready for the event and I got my hair cut. It was great. It's the first time I've had my hair cut probably since about 2018. So we all went to get our hair cut, my mom, my aunts, my grandma. And then after that, we went and got ready for the party. We got to get all dressed up. The party was super fun. It was a great Gatsby themed, so that was really cool. And it had a really beautiful view of the mountains around LA and also of LA traffic. <laughs> So we are in the fabric district right now. We're gonna go grab some coffee and then we're gonna go shopping. I made a kind of mood board of the dresses that I liked from Bridgerton. There's two styles that I really like. There's the kind of more simple fabrics. These look like satin and chiffon overlaid with a bunch of jewels on them. But I also really liked the kind of 90s inspired, early 2000s inspired dresses that are very like small daisies or flower lace and like that kind of stuff. Those are the kinds of fabrics I'm gonna be looking for. I didn't make a rendering because because I decided that I'll just go with whatever fabric is easiest to find. If I find a lot of cute laces and stuff, then I will go with that. If I can't find any and I find more bejeweled stuff, then I'm gonna go with that. The color schemes, I've decided that I wanna do kind of a gray purple, so it's still gonna be pastels and light colored, but it's gonna be less 
cotton candy colored. Other things that I felt really inspired by, so I've decided that if I do end up going for more of the like plain fabrics with jewels on it, then I'm gonna do this kind of sleeve maybe and try to do like some chiffon overlays. So these are fairly similar to this, it's just a little bit different with the embellishments. The other thing that I really liked was this really cute bow in the back. So if I decide to do more of the 90s, 2000s inspired ones, I'm definitely doing this cute bow in the back. That's pretty much it. That's what I've got as far as inspiration. For Micah's, we're just gonna look for a wool or a velvet that he's coordinating with mine. And then we also need to find a brocade. I didn't do as many pictures of his because it's less exciting for me. Oh well. Um, we're gonna look for a brocade that matches whatever fabric I find for mine. So we'll look for my stuff first because Micah just has to match me. That's what I got. So let's go fabric shopping. Yay, exciting. Coffee first. Okay, bye. So I found some really perfect fabric for something that's kind of like this at the first store we went to. Now we're kind of seeing if we can find anything better. The stuff we found is $6.50 a yard, which is great. So probably that's going to end up being what I buy, but I'm looking for some more lace to see if I can supplement and add a little bit more detail. And then I'm also going to be keeping a lookout for stuff that's more rhinestone-y like this and maybe some nice satin, but we'll see about that. I don't know. Sometimes you just hit the right thing the first store you try. So that's probably what we're going to go with. <laughs> That was a great success and I didn't spend too much money. Uh, <laughs> spent a lot, but not too much. Mike is carrying most of it. Wow, you look like an undercover movie star. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do a haul later, but right now we're gonna go explore some bookstores and we will see you guys there. Okay. <laughs> As we were walking out of the fabric district, I really wanted to go to B Black & Sons. B Black & Sons is really well known for their wool. They are also slightly outside of the fabric district. We'd already bought fabric for Micah's Bridgerton jacket, so that was what I had wanted wool for originally, but we ended up going with a velvet from Blue Moon Fabrics. It's a stretch velvet, so that's gonna be a challenge. <laughs> but I still really wanted to check them out because I'd never been inside of them. I would always missed it on our previous trips. So. We went there and the sign on the door said, ring the doorbell. So I rang the doorbell because the door didn't open. And the guy comes to the door and he's like, we're only open for appointments. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'll leave. And he was like, do you know what you want? And I was like, not really, I was just gonna browse around. He's like, well, if you don't need any help, 
you can go browse around, but I can't help you. You just need to find what you want and come up to the front when you're done. <laughs> I was like, great, I can do that. He let me in when he probably was not supposed to. <laughs> and that was really nice of him. I was able to walk around and I found this really beautiful green linen. And I'm hoping to make a kind of cottage core dress out of it. So even though this was not actually on my original list, I'm really excited that I found something so nice. Our flights back home were really uneventful and went very smoothly. And we were so excited to get home to the cats. I think that honeybee did not realize that we were actually gone. My dad was coming every day to feed the cats, so he was well fed. Baby Bella got really stressed out that we were gone and she's just now getting back into her rhythm just in time for us to take them to Chicago. But now what you've all been waiting for, I have my fabric next to me. So let's go through a fabric haul. Okay, I'm gonna start with the linen because it has nothing to do with the rest of the fabric, so might as well get that one out of the way. This is the green linen that I was talking about. It's so beautiful. I think this was $19 a yard and I bought all of the bolt that they had. So they had three and three quarters of a yard. It's like very soft, very light linen. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it exactly, but if you are interested in seeing what I do with it, then I'll make a video on it. If you just want to see the finished project eventually then let me know to skip the video and i'll just show pictures on instagram or something that was what i got at b black and sons that was my only impulse purchase so i i think i did good at not making too many impulse purchases Moving on to my Bridgerton costume, I decided on doing a lace look because that was the fabric I found. It gives me a little bit more freedom in finding fun fabrics, whereas with satin, I would have to be more creative with the patterning and with the embellishments, which is fine. I like doing that too, but Frau is so embellishment heavy. I was kind of leaning more towards wanting to do something with a lot of fun lace that I did not have to digitize and sew out myself. So the first thing that I found was this pretty lace. Now that I am looking at it at home, Home. I'm wondering if maybe it's a little bit too white so maybe I will dip it into some lavender poly dye it's got some metallic silver woven into it so that's nice not woven embroidered into it this was from the first store that we went into we actually went to Starbucks to grab some coffee use the bathroom because there are very few bathrooms in the fabric district but this is from Amy's textile and trims I bought seven yards this was 6.50 a yard it was originally 14 or 18 dollars a yard but it was on the street in one of the like clearance barrels i guess so i saw this as we were drinking our coffee and trying to finish it to go into the store this was just way in the back and i saw it and i was like this i want this one so this is what i picked the dress will get a lining and then this will be the overlay next i decided that I did want to kind of blend the two styles where it's the lace, but then it also has some embellishments on the bust that is more like the encrusted jewel look. However, I thought that it would be more cost effective to do it with some beaded and shiny lace rather than to use just a lot of stones for that because using set stones can get really expensive. A set of four of them can sometimes be $50. So I then decided that I was going to look for an embellished kind of bridal lace. That's where this comes in. Oops, I'm losing some beads here. It cut me a little bit more than a yard since it's got beads on it. It like will unravel a little bit. So this one is from Lace and Fabrics by Golden Dolphin. It's an interesting name. Everything in there basically was some kind of beaded lace. They had beaded lace trims as well. This was $48 a yard. It was listed at 55 I believe or 54 and he gave me a discount because if you look at something in the fabric district and then you walk away usually they'll lower the price by a little bit that's what happened with this one I didn't do that with this one I did walk away and I said like oh I'm gonna be back but I wasn't trying to get the lower price for that one because it was already so discounted it was just literally because it was the first store I wasn't really trying to do it with this one either I literally this was like the second store we walked into it was just really lucky that I found all the things that I really liked and really wanted right off the bat and we did look around afterwards and I still didn't find anything that I liked more than these two so I don't really have buyer's remorse or FOMO or <laughs> anything from this it just happened to be really lucky that this time we found what we needed pretty much immediately doesn't always happen in fact very rarely <laughs> happens this is the color scheme that I wanted originally so obviously I couldn't afford to buy seven yards of this because seven yards at $50 is a lot of money <laughs> so I opted just to like go for embellishment and maybe I'm gonna look for a tool that is this color to maybe overlay onto the silver fabric 
just because this was the general color that I wanted. But this is so beautiful and I love this fabric. So I'm very happy with it. One of the stores that I go to every time I'm in the fabric district, I love their fabric, but the guy who owns the store is really pushy which makes me kind of uncomfortable. It means that I do find things that I like there all the time because he's working really hard to get you what you want so that you will buy stuff from his store. So that's a really good pro. The con is that if you are the kind of person who likes to go to a store and browse around and not be bothered by the store people, this is not the store for you. <laughs> I always kind of have to like psych myself up mentally and like emotionally <laughs> to go into this store. And then every time I leave the store, I am very drained. His store is like very crowded. There's a ton of fabric everywhere. It's very hard to walk through. It's like walking through the Grand Canyon of fabric. So by the time that I got to this store, I'd already gotten all of the lace from my dress, so I knew that I wasn't looking for that. I would love to have bought lace from this store. However, I know that they do not have anything that I could find for 658 yards. Because for this project, I'm gonna be making costumes both for myself and for Micah. I knew that I kinda had to keep some of the costs down because I can't afford to spend like a thousand dollars. I have bought lace at this store before. I used it for my Hannah Alexander Dark Lady design. It's all of the black lace on on the bottom edge. It's really beautiful so I would highly recommend going to the store if you have the budget for it. The other thing that I don't love <laughs> about the shop owner here is that he will look at your previous purchases and he will really really talk down about them. Like obviously I have to take the fabric out that I've already bought so that I can match it to whatever I'm trying to find and he always talks about how terrible the stuff I got was, how I shouldn't have gone to other stores, how all the stuff I got was just cheap garbage from China which is a whole other thing itself. <laughs> but he really talks down about other stores, which makes me super uncomfortable. You will find beautiful stuff, you just kind of have to deal with his personality, which is, in my opinion, not the best. <laughs> But because I'd already found lace, I was then looking for something to make for Micah's costume. The piece that I'm gonna be making for Micah's costume is a waistcoat and tailcoat. So I was looking for wools or velvets for the tailcoat and brocades for the waistcoat. I was also looking for a lining for my dress to go under all of the lace that I bought. I found a lining that I really liked. He claims that it's 100% silk. I'm not sure if I completely believe him. Feels like maybe it's rayon. I'll burn it when I actually do my Bridgerton series and we'll find out exactly what the fiber content is. I was a little bit hesitant because it's not shiny. A lot of the satins in Bridgerton are very shiny. I loved this color. This color did not come in anything that wasn't matte, but I figured shiny can sometimes look really cheap, so it'd be better to go too matte than too shiny. About eight yards and he charged me eight dollars for it. He was originally going to charge me sixteen dollars for it, but when I said like I can't spend sixteen dollars a yard on lining, he lowered the price first to twelve and then to eight. And then when I was purchasing the fabric, he was like, how much did I say I would charge for you? I think like $12, right? I was like, no, you definitely said eight. So he gave me the fabric for $8 a yard. And then because there was an off cut, he threw that in for free. So this is my eight yard piece. And then this was the off cut, which I think is about two yards. So I got about 10 yards of this for $60. $4, which is pretty good. This was originally the color palette that I wanted and I think that it all looks nice together but I think that the kind of more muted gray tone looks better with my complexion so I I don't know. So that was the stuff that I found for me and that's pretty much all of the fabric for my dress. I was also looking for brocade and the stuff he kept pulling out was all monochrome white and I'm trying to match this and not just make a white waistcoat. I found this under a pile of other bolts. It was just kind of barely peeking out and I saw the little corner of it. I was like, that's the one I want. <laughs> I had Micah dig it out for me. It's perfect, I love it. It's, I guess, gold instead of silver tone, but I think they look really nice together. And the lining colors are basically like, they're so similar. With my extra two yards that he gave me, I'll probably make the lining for this. This was my very expensive purchase. This was $55 a yard and I bought one and a half yards. The last thing that I bought was for Micah's tail coat. I I had originally wanted a wool or a non-stretch velvet for this, but I got this purplish red velvet from Bloomin' Fabrics. It's a stretch velvet, so that's gonna be a challenge, but I really loved how it looked with this brocade. So we bought, I think, five yards of this, and it's all gonna be needed to be stabilized. I bought all of my blue velvet for Frau at the same place years and years ago. So hopefully, <laughs> once I'm done with Frau and starting this project, I will have 
a better idea of how to properly stabilize this so that it's not giving me a lot of trouble. Blue Moon is pretty much the opposite of the store that I was just talking about. They are very much the kind of store that you go in and you browse and once you figure out what you want, you just say, hey, can I get some help getting this fabric? They will follow you to your fabric, take it off the rack for you, and then cut it, and then you just go to the register and you pay. And that is the absolute most interaction you need to have with the staff there. The other thing to note about Blue Moon is that it's almost exclusively stretch fabric. So if you are looking for more historical fabric, this isn't really the right place to go. I would really suggest Be Black and Sons for that instead, and then like searching through the rest of the fabric district. That's all the fabric that I bought. I was also looking for a printed poly organza, and that was the only fabric that I couldn't find and I've looked also on the internet, can't seem to find it there either. That's for a project in the future. I got a couple of selkie dresses and I wanna do the same thing that I did with the strawberry dress, which is walk through the construction and the quality and whether I think it's worth the price tag. <laughs> and then I also wanna do a couple of videos on how to take a pattern off of them and recreating the dress. For that, I wanted to use some kind of fun printed poly organza. However, poly organza that is not a solid color is really hard to find. It's either all embroidered or it's a solid color. So if you have any leads on that, please let me know. I would love to find something really cute and fun that is kind of similar in theme to what Selkie designs. So if you are ever in LA, I really recommend going to their fabric district to look for any supplies you might need for your projects. Blue Moon and Valentina kind of represent really opposite ends of the spectrum of fabric stores that you'll find. Valentina on the one hand is very kind of in your face and will make sure that you leave with something. Whereas Blue Moon is very hands off and kind of lets you browse and do your own thing and only steps in when you need to actually make your purchase. Most of the other stores in the fabric district are kind of in the middle somewhere. They will usually let you browse on your own and they'll ask you if you need help right off the bat but if you say like oh i'm just looking or i'm browsing they'll leave you alone for the rest of the time that you're there if you do say you need help then obviously they'll help you everyone is very friendly and willing to help you out in any store that you go to don't let my story about the one store scare you off if you are a little bit more introverted not all the stores are like that and you will find beautiful things in pretty much every store so that's all i've got for you guys today i hope you enjoyed this video i know that it was very different from my normal videos but I haven't made much sewing progress lately so I thought I would show you the other things I'm up to and hopefully the fabric district was interesting enough. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fabric district I'm definitely not an expert but I can try to answer as much as I can. If you have recommendations for next time I go back or if you think I missed anything really important then let me know and I'll make sure to check it out next time. And if you want to see my other videos, if you want to see my progress on Frau coming next week, then please subscribe and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!